Hey internets, so today I just want to quickly point out something a lot of people miss when talking about politicization of video games, TV shows, and movies and whatnot. Because I saw this little tweet right here, or X post I guess you can say these days, and it's mostly correct. It just misses a very critical detail that a lot of people kind of gloss over, and it's important that people understand this. Anyways, the post reads, when people say they don't like politics in video games, they mean I don't like progressive identity politics in video games. There's no issue with this, progressive identity politics are dumb and bad, and then of course it shows an example of politics in Bioshock. Now, to some degree, this is true. Progressive identity politics are indeed really stupid and always bad when they appear in media. But there's something a bit more to it that explains why that is. And it just really boils down to the fact that there's kind of a right way to include politics in a video game or whatever you're making, and a wrong way to do it. And I'm just going to use the game I'm playing for this quick rant as a fun example. So, Sanic the Freaking Hedgehog. So think of a hypothetical scenario where we'll just say that the original creators of Sonic the Hedgehogs were extreme, big-time, highly devout Christians and they wanted to include something about Christianity in their game. There's a right way to do it, and there's a really stupid and cringe way to do it. And just for fun, I'll start with the cringe path. Imagine if between the first two levels there was this little scene, where you have an extremely muscular, I guess, Shadow the Hedgehog praying to the cross, along with one of those other friends. I don't actually play Sonic very much, so I don't know who that other guy is and I don't care to research it. But anyway, yeah, just imagine this was an actual scene in the game rather than just crazy fan art. We're just in the middle of the gameplay for absolutely no reason. All of the characters just suddenly start praying to the cross. Random Bible verses start going through the screen and there's no way to skip it. You have to sit through this for about two minutes before it lets you go on to the next level. And yes, by the way, this is actual fan art. People actually draw this stuff. Sonic probably has some of the worst fan art ever made to the point where it actually loops back to being funny. And you can't even tell if they're being ironic or not. Now, even if you're a diehard Christian yourself, you have to admit that it would be really, really lame if something like this was in the game. There's just something about it that seems so pointless. You can clearly and obviously tell that all the devs would be trying to do if they actually did this is they're just trying to insert themselves into their own game while aggressively pushing for what they believe in, not really giving the player the choice to think for themselves. But of course, this doesn't mean that you can't have politics and religion in a game. A better way to do it, for example, would be say that Knuckles drops some kind of item of his that has a very high value attached to it, and Sonic finds it, picks it up, and instead returns it to Knuckles. And then Knuckles asks him, well, why did you return this to me when you could have just sold it for a high price? And then Sonic responds with that stealing goes against his beliefs. And then it leaves it at that. It doesn't require you to believe in a specific religion, for instance, Thou shall not steal is one of the Ten Commandments, but you can totally relate to something like that even if you're not a Christian because there's plenty of other belief systems that also believe that stealing is wrong. It's not pushy, it lets the players think for themselves, and you wouldn't even know that it's a plug for Christianity unless you knew that the devs themselves were also Christians. You wouldn't even know that that's what Sonic could be referring to when he says that it goes against his beliefs. In other words, when you focus more on principles and let the player choose for themselves on whether or not they agree with those principles, then injecting politics into media is generally okay. In fact, it would honestly be really hard to make a story that doesn't have any kind of principles in it. It's just that there's a smart way to do it, and a really, really stupid way to do it. But then the question immediately follows, why is it in progressive identity politics it always seems that they choose the stupid way? It's always some weird race swapping or some weird mo representation shtick, or in-your-face girl boss crap, and various forms of social justice self-insert Mary Sue trash. The lefty progs always have to go with the in-your-face cringe. And the reason why they do this is actually really simple, and this is what a lot of people are missing. Because they have to. Progressive idpol woke toy cultists have no other choice but to choose the cringe in-your-face method of inserting their political ideology. Because you see, the problem with the progressive identity politics is that it doesn't actually have anything in it that it consistently believes in on any principled grounds and thus they have nothing for which to soft insert into their media. For example, intersectionality. They claim to believe in intersectionality, but they don't really believe in it. Because intersectionality logically concludes in individualism. And woke cultists don't believe in individualism, they believe in collectivism. And thus they can't actually include the principle of intersectionality, which would be judging people based on their individual traits. Oh no, they have to go with the in-your-face pushy version, which boils down to more representation. And they don't actually believe in getting rid of hierarchies either, because you can't get rid of hierarchies. It's a nonsensical, self-contradictory belief. And of course, when you point this out to them, they'll usually admit that they actually do believe in hierarchies, they just believe in justified hierarchies. Which hierarchies are justified and which hierarchies are not justified? Well, whichever hierarchies happen to make them feel good in the moment. So there's no real way for them to soft insert anything like that on principle, because again, they don't really believe it. Or how about my equality? Well, the only real difference in believing in equality between them, the woke cultists, and your general liberals is that the wokes believe in a collective version of equality, which again is insane. 
because that will contradict individual equality. And so the only real way for the woke toys to distinguish themselves from the liberals is to basically include some kind of in-your-face communist crap. They don't actually believe that racism is bad because they think that colorblindness is bad. Which, of course, everyone who isn't completely insane is able to immediately recognize as an obvious logical self-contradiction. So again, their politics ends up being in-your-face representation. They don't believe racism is wrong on any kind of principle, they just believe it's wrong in regards to their flawed way of looking at collective equality, and their assumption that any inequities between groups implies some kind of discrimination, which is an equity fallacy. And if you listen to a lot of bread tubers and other far-left online pundits, you'll notice that they have occasional mask-off moments where they actually admit this. The only thing they really believe in is just ends justify the means towards communism. And that's why everything progressive idpool believes include in TV and video games whenever they manage to get their grubby little hands on it, always just feels like some blatant, unprincipled propaganda. Because it is blatant, unprincipled propaganda. That's all they can do. When you contradict yourself on everything and don't actually believe in anything that you're saying, that's pretty much all you have. And that's why progressive identity politics in video games always end up being dumb and bad. Because to go the less pushy and philosophical route of including your ideology in some kind of media requires you to have some kind of consistent, tangible, universal principle that other people people can relate with, which you could include without directly referencing your ideology. Which is something that the cult of woke just flat out doesn't possess. Anyways, that's all. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and whatever. Till next time.